Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Chad Sports Talk. As you know, my name is Chad. I take a dive on sports. And this is going to be part one of a three-part series of my fix for the FBS. Now, my first two videos in this is going to be more of conference realignment type of, of video. So I'll have a moderate type of version. One's probably a little more likely in an extreme version, which would never happen. And then my proposal in the third video is kind of how to kind of fix the schedule, which will kind of throw a lot of people angry because it's going to change a lot of aspects in terms of the regular season. So before we dive into all that fun action, if you could go ahead and smash that thumbs up for me, especially though the content provides you and really pleases you two gods and helps promote this channel out. You can also subscribe. A lot of you guys review my work. I love you all for doing that. Not me if you subscribe. This costs you a dime. It helps me provide more intimate value for you. We're going to dive into the realignment aspects of this mo moderate uh, realignment. I was trying to even the FBS across the board. Uh, right now, it's at 133 schools in this uh realignment scenario and make sure there's no independent programs everyone was in so it, had to be, it has to be a few things that happen to make this really uh, transpire I got one where three additional SCS programs are pulled up to bring it to 136 but I also have a scenario towards the end of the video where I add four more to even it to 140 across the board and that is it you lock the FBS at 140 members with this particular one I um, kind of looked at uh, conference uh, uh, money, mainly, and uh, the plausibilities of some of these uh, schools switching around like this. So, in this scenario, I actually have four conferences that don't change a thing. I mean, it, it's their... Probably would say, you know, too powerful. Uh, one of them, for sure, is way too powerful. So, they're not going to lose anyone because that means they lose money. And we all know money is the driving factor in all this. And some of them just at this time, I don't think there's any viable members in the particular area as of yet. Um, so I just kind of you know minimize some of the, the, the switching around of, of schools to the bare minimum as possible. So let's go ahead and just kind of stroll out some of the uh, conferences that don't change. SEC. Should be a no-brainer. Uh, this conference has tons of money coming in. No one's going to leave this conference, so that's that. Uh, Pac-12, that one is a little bit more of a more difficult choice not to expand this conference because I do think there's members in the Mountain West that would fit nicely in here. Uh, like Boise State and San Diego State are the top two coming to my mind. Uh, but I think right now they're going to hold off on that because, one, they don't want a fifth program in California. And Boise State's academic level is not quite up to what the Pac-12 really wants because they don't have a doctor program, they don't have a medical program. So I think if Boise State can get those things up and running, they'll definitely get the invite to join the Pac-12. The MAC, uh, with MAC Nation, I don't see anything happening with them. I mean, there's a few possibilities of them going out west, grabbing FCS members, moving down south, grabbing Conference USA members. But I think right now, Mac Nation is going to stay where they're at. They're close-knit family. As you can see, they're pretty much on top of each other, so it makes traveling great between these pro uh, programs and really uh, gets local flair. And the Mountain West. Initially, nothing's going to happen to them, but I do have a scenario towards the end where things could possibly happen with additions with this conference, but more to follow on that later. Now, the first one, I kind of go with the, uh, the, the, the Power 5 conferences and look at, okay, here is what we're going to do with these particular uh, conferences. So with the ACC, Technically, it's a 15-member conference because Notre Dame is a member in all but two sports at hockey and football. Uh, hockey, they're in the Big Ten. and football, they are independent, and everyone knows, and everyone hates that. They're just jealous. As you can tell, I am a Notre Dame fan, but I'm also one that knows that Notre Dame really belongs in the conference. I know which conference they belong in, and it's not the ACC. It wasn't the Big East either. Uh, those are the two conferences that offer them the best opportunity for them to be uh, football independent. But I think if things change with the college football playoff, 
Notre Dame has got to find a way to uh, coexist in this new landscape. The only way to do that is to finally adopt a conference for football. Now, right now, their agreement with ACC means that they have to join a conference for football. It will be the ACC. Now, we saw that back in uh, 2020 when they actually played in the ACC because that's the only way they could get games. But for me, there's another conference that actually is more beneficial for them where they should be at. And it's a conference that that that, that scored them quite a bit, but I'll get to that a little bit. In this scenario, another day was able to negotiate a buyout of their contract. Notre Dame has the money, so that could be a big deal. An agreement for them to leave ACC to bring them back down to 14 members. Also had a possibility of Louisville uh, leaving as well, since they're kind of like the oddball in this conference, not being a, a Eastern Coast type of state because they're more in the central, you know, more centralized. Because I almost put Louisville in the Big 12, which I think would make sense because you get Cincinnati and Louisville, get the uh, uh, Battle of Kagan Nails as a, a annual matchup in the conference. Been great for that rivalry and moving forward, but I decided not to and left Louisville where they're at. But speaking of the Big 12, this is where the ACC gets their two new members. That's right, ACC is going to go to 16, and I think these two will fit in nicely. Those good mid-card teams that could really compete for the ACC title pretty much right away. And that's West Virginia and UCF. West Virginia already has rivalries already built in with Pitt with the backyard brawl. You need to bring that back. The Black Diamond Series with Virginia Tech. And they know Syracuse, BC, Miami, and Louisville extremely well uh, with their days back in the Big East and American. And then UCF is a nice rising star um, with those uh, uh, four additional universities outside Florida, Florida State, Miami. UCF is right up there, and actually, some, in some aspects, have actually surpassed most of those programs due to the recent success. They don't have the pedigree or the history, but recently, they've done better. So I think putting those two schools in the ACC kind of makes sense, gives them 16 members, and they move on. So the next on the list would be the Big Ten. And to the aforementioned Notre Dame Irish, this is the conference they belong to. This is the conference I've always said they belong to. You know, I've said in many videos, this is where the school belongs to. As a Notre Dame fan, I say they belong in this conference. They have robberies with Michigan, Michigan State, Purdue, Northwestern, Ohio State, Penn State. They could easily establish one with Wisconsin, Indiana, Illinois, all right there. This is another big, big blue blood program into this conference to help rival the SEC as beating, you know, at least a number two until they're able to beat SEC regularly. But Notre Dame belongs here. So it puts them up to 15. Who's going to be number 16? Well, everyone will say Kansas. Kansas basketball is something that you will want in this conference, but football-wise, not so much. And Kansas will probably more likely want Kansas State to come along. So they have the Sunflower Classic as a conference game always. But Kansas State doesn't meet the AAU requirement. You, near does Notre Dame. I think Big Ten was going to look, look over that to get to Notre Dame in as long as Notre Dame applied when they joined. So go ahead and grab an AAU program that's within reasonable distance to the footprint of the Big Ten. I mean, I would have put Syracuse in that conversation, but they removed themselves from there like Nebraska did, so Syracuse won't get added. They'll give another uh, uh, East Coast team for the Big Ten, which I think is part of what they want, um, which now part of move Cincinnati over to ACC. But anyways, uh, and looking, they wouldn't grab any other ACC programs because they all have pretty much established rivalries in there, and they want to break them too much. I mean, especially North Carolina, they're not, they're not going to leave. Uh, Georgia Tech's not going to leave. Texas not going to leave the SEC. Missouri's not going to leave the SEC. Going to the West Coast makes no sense. Um, they are grabbing like Rice or Tulane. Those are AAU programs, but I don't think they will grab Iowa State. Um, 
they'll bring the Seahawks trophy into conference play. Uh, Nebraska and Iowa State can go back to battling each other once again. Uh, maybe Nebraska will start winning again if they play Iowa State regularly. And it just doesn't, you know, I know this doesn't increase the footprint of the Big Ten, but it, it, it helps streamline them getting a little more uh, regionalized-ish. And I think those two additions of Notre Dame, Iowa State, immediately can be put in, into the, the conversation of conference champions. Maybe Iowa State, not as much as Notre Dame, but they'll definitely be a mid-card team. So then that means three of the Power 5 schools will be 16 members, and that'll be, the, that'll be it. Um, I don't think the Super Leagues will be a advantageous thing moving forward. I think once the SEC can establish it and make it a viable option, maybe the Big Ten ACC follows suit, and then the Big 12 and Pac-12 will look at it, the viability as well if more conferences would do this. But speaking of the Big 12, I mean, now you know they've lost their two teams east in Orlando, in West Virginia and UCF. Now they got to look at uh, programs and as well you know, to fill in the void of also losing Iowa State. Now, the, the common thread throughout everywhere is Boise State is the number one choice. While I do not argue that aspect uh, with Boise State as an excellent program, the original BCS Buster that still has not been included into the, uh, the power conferences. But I think for the if if the Big Twelve loses their two Eastern Coast teams, adding teams closer to the West Coast is not the answer. Even though I understand Boise State, San Diego State, uh, even Fresno State are probably like the best three out there at the West Coast. You could probably throw in Colorado State in that that uh, argument. But I think if Colorado State goes, then I think Wyoming should be tagged along with them. The service academies have all been uh, rumored here and there, uh, including Air Force for the Big 12. I know Navy's been kind of mentioned there so often for uh, the ACC. But for the service academies, if you add one, you got to add all three. Um, that's, I, I think that's just the, the, the uh, going rate. Right. You can't just can't add one of them. It, it diminishes their, their rivalry. And the Army-Navy rivalry is one of the oldest in College football is the one that gets part of the, the most uh, national tension every year. But I took that all aside and I went more into uh, what can they do to really solidify their key location right there in that upper Missouri Valley down to, you know, the Lone Star State. And for me, I looked at uh, Memphis would be the number one choice because uh, – we all know they've decided to put millions and millions of dollars into renovating the Liberty Bowl. Finally, um, I think it's one of the sticky points. Memphis didn't really say uh, uh, when to join the Big 12 at the time frame of their initial push, which probably means it could have left UCF out, um, possibly. But now that they're getting the, 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 the funds to renovate the Liberty Bowl, now Memphis becomes a more attractive target for the Big 12, and I think they'll be the number one expansion choice with a bullet um, right there to get the renew the rivalry with Cincinnati, another good uh, mid car uh, basketball and football program. So they kind of replace Iowa State, I think, in that aspect, and also puts a team in SEC territory right there in the western part of Tennessee. And then for them, I will continue that trend. I'll go further down the river and grab another major city with that has professional ties, also with SEC ties. I will grab Tulane. Now, I understand Tulane probably uh, athletically is probably not the best choice. I will concede that. I'm sure there's a few other choices out there if you look in that in the American uh, Conference. Uh, schools you might want to pull from there in that region. Uh, UAB is probably a little bit better uh, athletically than Tulane. But Tulane also gets you a little bit more uh, academically. They kind of help live the, you know, the academics portion of the conference as well. 
and that I would bring in SMU as well. And I understand adding another Texas team, and uh, there might be some pushback on this one, but SMU already has established rivalries with Tech, TCU, Baylor, and Houston. Not to mention, if you bring in Memphis and Tulane, they already got that rivalry going from the American. And also a little bit with Cincinnati. So they are known between a lot of these schools. I think they really, uh, really solidify their, their, their uh, footprint where they're at. Well, I understand the desire to go west. But to go, them to go west, they have to compete with the Pac-12. So if the Pac-12 also decide to expand, they're also looking at Mountain West. So the Big 12 and the Pac-12 will probably look at some time, point in time to see which schools they want to pluck out of the Mountain West to expand their footprint. But that's for a different time. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and go with the uh, group of five. And let's go ahead and start with the American. This is the one that, that lost the most schools in, in this whole scenario. They lost three. But only had them grabbing one. Now, with them, I kind of struggled trying to figure out which one I was going to take. And then looking at some of their uh, associate members, they have three that are, are could be pulled from the Sun Belt and the Conference USA. They are associate members in one or two other sports. Uh, mainly women's lacrosse was, was like the main main one there. And I decided for them to go into an area that uh, they don't have a school present there full time. And I decided to grab James Madison. This is also a school I've mentioned in earlier uh, videos on this channel that the Americans should go after James Madison. I think James Madison is probably be, you know, is the best option of those remaining Virginia schools outside of Virginia, Virginia Tech. That should give you the biggest umph, which was a great pickup by the Sun Belt. But I think uh, the Americans should just swoop in there and take James Madison out and fill in the void. Which kind of, if you kind of look at this conference now, it's more Eastern heavy. But I have another scenario, like I did, like I did with the Mount West, a little bit later, that they could also add. Now speaking of Sun Belt, now they got filled the void of losing James Madison. So where are you going to go? Well, you stay in state. You go into Conference USA, and then you take their uh, outlier and Liberty, and then you pull them into the Sun Belt. Nothing really changes in terms of uh, demographics or geogra uh, the geography of the conference. It just stays the same. You just go from James Madison down to Liberty. I think pretty simple. Now, the biggest uh, change is going to have to happen is with Conference USA. Conference USA bylaws kind of uh, limits their options because they're not, they're not going to go after schools that also have, offer pretty much admission in, into football. I think for them, they will have to restructure those particular bylaws to ensure that, hey, you know, we prefer that you come in a full member with football. However, if we are able to entice football-only members, we can entice as many non-football members as a polar opposite, pretty much what the American has done with Navy and Wichita State. That's what Conference USA will have to do. Once they change those bylaws, I do think they will extend the invitation to Army, UConn, and UMass to bring all three of them into Conference USA's football-only members. Now, it doesn't change the fact of, you know, now they're down to eight completely across the board, so they're going to do some uh, major expansion as well. And I have some ideas that would kind of help them solidify themselves a little bit more, uh, regionalize, and probably help... Uh, Solidify their, their, their repaired foundation. So once they are able, like I said, once they change the bylaws and bring in the three up north in the northeast in, then I say they go va invading the SCS again. First, grabbing from the whack, Stephen F. Austin, which already has a history with Sam Houston, as well as Louisiana Tech back in the Southland days. And also invading the A Sun once again and grabbing Eastern Kentucky, Central Arkansas, and Florida Gulf Coast as a non football member. That will give them 14 members for football, 12 for basketball, 
a little more regionalized. So now the only outliers are New Mexico State and UTEP, but now they have a travel, they're, they're travel partners, and they got that rivalry going between them. Uh, FAU is no longer an outlier in other sports, just they're in, in football, they're outlier. But now they have a travel partner with Florida Gulf Coast, who is on the opposite side of the tip of Florida. And with uh, Eastern Kentucky, automatically established a rivalry with Western Kentucky, which they already have. Central Arkansas can play their games in Little Rock and War Memorial until they can build up their, their home stadium if that's their desire. And they can already uh, continue on their, their battles with CMF Austin, Sam Houston, Louisiana Tech. So it makes this, this conference a little more regionalized and more streamlined. But once again, that means they have to change their bylaws. And this is about the only thing that is not moderate about this particular uh, realignment. But I think it's something that Conference USA is going to have to do in order to survive. Because uh, I don't think uh, the major realignment is done. I think thing, more things will change once uh, the new deals are kicking in. Now, that being said, I do have two other scenarios. Um... With all, everything else that took that took up the FBS football to 136. Now my next two are just uh, could happen, but more likely maybe not. But I see is more plausible than a deniability. First, let's go with the Mountain West. Uh, the Mountain West has flirted with the idea of expanding. Um, they rumored to grab, were trying to grab Gonzaga to even their basketball members to 12. Gonzaga then. Uh, announced that they're staying the West Coast for the certain for the remainderable future, which didn't close the door completely and left it ajar. Now, for uh, the Mount West to grab, say a a basketball member, definitely Gonzaga is probably top of the list. If Gonzaga says no, and then I see one or two options, and they're both coming out of the whack. One's going. Um, with Grand Canyon out there in Phoenix. I can see them going down there to kind of grab that Arizona market, uh, stress their footprint a little bit. But I think with Grand Canyon, with the Utah programs in the WAC, I think they're more uh, staying there. So the number two prospect, the Kankin Gonzaga, I think is Seattle. Uh, Seattle is an outlier in, in the WAC right now. They're, they're not the only ones in that southwest region that Utah area. And, you know, Chicago State leaving, that kind of leaves Seattle. So they need schools closer to kind of help them. The closest school now would be Utah Tech if they join this current Mount West. It would be Boise State. But if I was the Mount West, I'm grabbing all three of them. Um, why not? <laughs> Make a 16-member basketball conference and just go. That's why I said 16. I was missing two. Is that means I'm adding two more football programs and two more really good football programs, plucking two from the big sky in Montana and in Montana State. I think both these programs could make the jump. Um, they'll make the jump together. Montana State football recently has been extremely uh, doing extremely well. Montana's already established as one of the SCS uh, uh, Blue Bloods. So plugging those two out of the big sky will hurt the big sky, but, you know, with Eastern Washington being, you could probably take the charge from there, uh, Weber State, Sacramento State, UC Davis, all those could probably take, you know, the sky, the big sky as their their, their new leaders of that conference. But I think adding the Montanas will really put the Mountain West as one of the elite group of five conferences probably even better than the Sun Belt. I think the Sun Belt has put themselves in a very good position themselves. The American has just been gutted. So I was, you know, put the Mountain West up there as one of the top, still one of the top uh, conferences in the group of five, especially grab the Montanas. And then my other scenario that a little bit more far, uh, far fetched, but could possibly happen is for the American. Um, we all know the American, in my scenario, will lose three teams in the middle. They'll grab one. But uh, I think they should go after two programs that are doing extremely well. One, I think FCS schools want to leave. see one of these, uh, this particular team leave because since they joined the FCS, they've dominated. So they definitely need to make the move up. And I say move up North Dakota State and 
South Dakota State into the American uh, to give Wichita State two, two more teams closer to them. Um, really establish an east-west type of a, 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 a geography, really, with the American Conference, using the Mississippi River pretty much as your divide between the two sides. And this will really help legitimize their football aspect. So then you bring in these two powerhouses from FCS and bring them up to really challenge UAB. Uh, maybe UTSA can maintain their momentum. South Florida, they can reach back up. FAU, Navy, James Madison. I mean, this will make the American another legit powerhouse in, once again, in the uh, group of five and possibly awful some other you know, you know, unique aspects per se, but you know, there's my moderate take and a little too extra, a little bit, uh, you know, changes, you know, 1.5 version 2.7937. <laughs> but you know, that, you know, I know there's a lot of these things are a little bit more moderate. Some of these things definitely won't probably won't happen in like Notre Dame buying out their contract to ACC. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, but you never know. Uh, I think, think a lot of things will have to change for this particular scenario to take off, especially if uh, the playoff rules change or a number of teams in the playoff change. Then this could possibly actually happen. A little bit more plausible than probably some other scenarios floating out there, especially for me. I can think of some wild ones. But and then pulling up more schools from FES to get to a particular even number, and I think if the FBS gets to 140, I think that's where they'll stop. That's the magic number. And we'll just go from there. And that's 140 programs. You definitely need to go with more than just four teams of playoffs. But I would not make that argument now. That's for part three. And then uh, the next video I'm going to do is more of my extreme version. This is the one. Uh, uh, this is one I definitely know will not happen. But I think it's part of a way to kind of, you know, bring balance to the force. But I won't divide a, a, a dive into that one too much. I'll kind of let you kind of, you know, think about that one. Think about, you know, how my crazy mind works. If you do, I'm sorry. You need to wear the white jacket with your sleeves tied behind your back. <laughs> you know, just let me know down below what you think about this particular scenario. Um, do you think this is that far-fetched? And then the conference you say one is... I will grant you that one. Um, but, you know, do you think it's actually viable? Do you think you really see this? Or do you think the, the uh, SEC is not going to be sustainable at 16 members? You know, schools will probably have to start leaving to kind of find more uh, uh, viable approaches that are not going to have to go through Alabama every single year. Just let me know down below. Once once you're there, once again, you hit that thumbs up. You can also share the video with your friends and family. Uh, once you subscribe, make sure you hit that bell notification. Let you know next time I post a video, especially the part two of this one, where I do my extreme. The extreme makeover of the FBS. And I will see you next time on Chat Sports Talk.